Well, welcome everyone to today's results recharge. Um, today we are talking about need to know strategies for Google Analytics 4. Uh, my name is Lori Ely. I am the CRO here at Results Direct. And today I am joined by Dan Sheeler, who is our Executive Vice President of Client Engagement. And he is our resident subject matter expert on all things Google Analytics 4 for today's webinar. So a little bit of background um, on Results Direct. Uh, for over 25 years, Results Direct has helped associations to achieve real results from their websites and mobile apps. We work with well over 300 clients worldwide, and Results Direct offers a range of solutions, including, as you can see on screen here, digital strategy, web design and development, CMS solutions, as well as industry-leading mobile event app and year-round member app for associations. Can I put a plug in for you guys? We're working currently with uh, Results Direct for our website design. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you yeah. want to show the organization you're with? For the uh, Hospice Palliative Nurses Association, um, based out of uh, a little suburb of uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, but uh, we we're scattered throughout the countryside, but we've uh, had several meetings with Dan and Caroline and uh, Caroline, I actually think is a, uh, an ex Pittsburgh person as well. So but the, for everybody else on the call, they're, they're all, they're all great people. So oh, thanks you can, for you can take my word for it. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Glad to have you here today. So, um, so as I mentioned, today's um, session is part of our Results Recharge series. Um, what Results Recharge is, it's a series that brings together leading subject matter experts with association executives to have engaging conversations about common association challenges and their solutions. And of course, today's challenge is um, learning about um, the quickly approaching Google Analytics 4. And of course, we'll be sharing with you some of the need to know strategies um, for, for tackling that. Um, this, we do have a really big group here today, and this is a very, very popular topic. Um, so do just want to make sure, you know, we stay muted just so we don't have um, audio issues. We can chime in as needed to ask questions and things like that, um, to share shout outs. Um, but also um, in terms of questions, we're going to have lots of time to be able to ask questions and have Dan share some things in real time. Um, please feel free to enter questions into the chat and we can make sure we um, go through and, and take some time answering those as well. So with that, Dan, I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to you to get us started. Okay. Well, thank you, Lori. Um, as Lori said, um, my name is Dan Sheeler. I'm the EVP here at Results Direct. I'm going to start with a couple of questions right away, just because I see two popping up in the chat. And that is, yes, we are recording this, and we do plan to share this out afterwards. So um, if you, you know, we hope everyone can stay here. Um, if you have to leave early, we'll have a recording available, or if you want to share it with your colleagues after this. Um, a little bit about the formats, you know, I'll be talking to you for the next, um, oh, probably about 10 minutes or so, I'm going to run through some slides with some bullet points. Um, we'll take a look at Google Analytics 4, but really this is an opportunity for us to have a conversation, for you to ask questions, um, to learn from each other. So, um, I lost my train of thought already, I apologize for that. Well, let me go ahead and jump right in, you know, with questions, if you want to drop them in the chat as we're going through this, feel free in a little bit. If you want to come off of mute and ask some of those, that's fine. Um, I have been a little challenged and I probably confused Lori by jumping through the slides. I realized one thing I didn't anticipate for is how to move through slides with so many people coming in, but let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to start with the key takeaways for today. So if your dog starts going nuts at the Amazon delivery guy and you have to drop off of here in five minutes, you won't get your CAEs, but these are the main things I'd like you to remember. And that is universal analytics, which is the Google analytics that most of us have used for the past 10 years is going away in July of 2023. Google has stated they will no longer be supporting that. That July date is right now their date when it will no longer be collecting data on your web properties. So if you are using Google Analytics, if you want Google Analytics to track engagement, users, visitors to your website, 
you will need to update to Google Analytics 4. The good news is you can do that today. Um, Google Anal Analytics 4 has been available since, I think, 2020. Um, it can be put on your website, and it can be run in parallel with Universal Analytics. So you don't have to give up the current analytics if you want to keep collecting data in there until the bitter end. You are able to do that. But we recommend sooner rather than later, you get Google Analytics 4 up and running as we have nine months left to go. So a little bit about what's new in Google Analytics 4. Um, one of the things is Google is focusing a lot more on privacy, as all of us are familiar with the past couple of years, um, the GDPR in Europe, California's privacy laws, um, countries, governments, states are taking, and individuals, a lot more interest in privacy. So to that end, Google Analytics 4 is less focused on individual user data and more on user engagement. It uses cookies less. Um, we see a lot of browsers suppressing cookies, um, again, for privacy. So the measurement is more looking at, it still uses cookies. It also uses when someone's logged into a Google account. It uses other data that they can use to track individuals. And the focus is on event-based measurement. And now when I say events, we're going to look at this in a little bit. Everything in Google Analytics 4 is an event. They've moved away from the concept of page views. They're really not looking at sessions. Everything is events. Now, you'll still be able to see your page views in your Google Analytics 4, um, but it's going to be a little different in terms of the view. Focus is really on user engagement. It's tracking users better across the touch points. Um, do they look at your website on their desktop and they later looked at it that evening on mobile, something that you sent them, and then came back the next day to complete a transaction, to register for that webinar, to renew their membership. Google Analytics 4 is des designed to be able to help us track our user engagement, how many touch points it takes for them to get to the conversions we want them to take on our website. Um, It's focused on tracking conversions, and it's made it a lot easier for you to identify what are the conversions that you want to track on your website, whether that's a registration for an event or a conference, um, whether it's submitting a, a form to inquire about some information, whether it's viewing particular content that your policy department has put out there. Um, it can help you analyze, track your marketing campaigns. Are your email campaigns driving more traffic? Or is it the paid advertising? Is it your social media? You will be able to see which of those are driving the most conversions the most effectively. And obviously, it's going to let you look at the content that people are looking at on your website. So let's talk about, I think I slipped, skipped. Apologies. There we go. All right, a couple other th changes that we'll look at. There are no, if you are familiar with Universal Analytics, you're familiar with, there are three basic segments in your account. The account followed by the property under which you may have multiple properties. And then the views um, where you could have up to 25 views on any given analytics property. Um, the old Google best practice was to have at least three views, your master reporting view, your testing view for setting up new filters, and your raw data view. Views no longer exist in Google Analytics 4. Everything will be done at the property level, um, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, nice thing about Google Analytics 4, there are more events by default, default including file downloads, video views, external clicks, um, scrolling through your web pages. Previously, we either had to go to a developer to put code on our site for that or use Google Tag Manager to add some tags and some JavaScript to get that data. That is native to Google Analytics for right now. So how do we get started with Google Analytics 4? We can set up that Google Analytics 4 property today. And if you're already using Universal Analytics, Google's made it very easy. There is a Google Analytics 4 setup assistant right there in your admin section. Um, you'll want to configure your data streams. 
Now a data stream, one thing that is new about Google Analytics for in a given property, you can have multiple data streams. So this is the first time that you could pull in data from both your website and your mobile app. So if you have, say an example, an, an app, uh, an event app or a year round app that runs on both Android and iOS, you would want to set up three data streams, one for your website, one for your iOS app, and one for your Android app. And then once you have those data streams set up, you would deploy your Google Analytics 4 to your website or to your app. Um, on the website, we would recommend using Google Tag Manager. You can also do it via global site tag. Um, Firebase is what's used to implement data streams on the app. Um, so with that, Once we have things set up, what do you want to do next? And we'll take a look at this, but you wanna set up your search parameters, activate Google Signals. Google Signals is what lets you, what lets you um, track um, demographics around your audience. So if you're interested in age, if you're interested in um, whether male, female, the gender of your users, um, you would wanna activate Google Signals. Now, one caveat is, Users do have more control over their data, so they can opt out of having that sort of data go into your Google Analytics 4. Some countries, you're not going to see that based on the country's privacy laws. So we'll take a look at some examples of that. Um, your data retention, the longest you can set data retention in Google Analytics 4 is to 14 months. Now, what I'm talking about here is that personal data, that user data. Some of that data that's from aggregates where we're not really tying it back to users, it's going to be there longer. So it, it, you don't have to worry that all data is going to disappear after 14 months. But right now, Google Analytics 4 gives you the choice between two months or 14 months. Um, we recommend 14. You know, I know a lot of marketing folks would love to see it for 15 months. So you could compare your traffic, your performance to the previous year's quarter. But for whatever reason, Google's cut us one short. You want to identify those conversions we talked about, such as event registrations, form submissions. Um, custom dimensions are a way that you can extend Google Analytics for even further to get at some of the data that you're really interested in seeing. And we'll take a look at that. And then, of course, creating meaningful reports so that you can actually leverage this data in your organization. Um, and we'll take a look at a few examples on that. I'm going to stop sharing this screen for a second and we'll jump into Google Analytics. Um, but while I do that, I see a few questions coming up. Um, one is, will Universal Analytics be available after July 2023? Google right now has said they're going to make that available until I believe the end of Q3, maybe early Q4 of 2023. Um, after that, they're going to take it down. So if you want to keep that data, you will need to export it from your Universal Analytics account. It will not, they'll give you a few months grace period. If you're paying for um, Google 360, you're going to get a little longer, but Google has indicated that they plan to take that offline. Um, so the um, tracking ac across multiple platforms you can implement, and we typically do this with both Universal Analytics and Google Analytics for um, your property, your data stream across the CMS, um, the LMS, the AMS, so that you can track that journey when someone comes to your website via an email campaign, say a HubSpot email you sent out. Um, they read the information on the annual conference when they click register it, when it hands them off to the AMS. Um, and then takes them back to the website. So, you know, we can go into more detail on that, but we would recommend using one property that tracks across your properties so that you can see that full user journey. Um, can I advise on legal issues? I am not an attorney, so I'm going to be candid. I'm not going to advise you on the legal issues of um, using Google Signals and the privacy-related features. We can look at those, but I would definitely re recommend talking with your counsel about that. Um, and so thank you, Scott. So you're saying it does get rid of the file download data at the, after the two months. So that is good to know. Um, so let's, you know, real quick, I'm just going to jump in and we'll 
walk you through a few things that I had talked about. And then we'll, you know, again, if you have questions, keep putting them in there, but we can jump in for more questions. Um, I appreciate you all bearing with me as I navigate between two monitors. All right, if I did this right, everyone is now seeing uh, a demo Google Analytics 4 site. So this is what the Google Analytics 4, well, let's go back to the home page. Yes, this is the home page. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see users, conversions, new users. If you have revenue dollar amounts configured, you'll see that. One nice thing that it was in Universal Analytics, but that I think Google's been doing a nice job with in Google Analytics 4 is machine learning. They are trying to use machine learning to improve the experience, but also give you insights and data on what's happening on your website. So if we look down here at the insights, you'll see um, users from t.co, which is the Twitter um, link domain, spiked over the past week. Um, we see that HubSpot emails drove the most conversions um, compared to organic traffic or other emails. And that the email appeared in over half of our conversion paths. So, I mean, this is something that, oops, was there a question? Thought I heard something, but, um, so this is the dashboard for Google Analytics 4. There are, under reports, we'll notice there are, Five, six, it helps if I can count, six different default reports. Acquisition talks about where the customers are coming from. Engagements, what content are they engaging with? Um, monetization, again, if we have any e-commerce set up, it's going to show their shopping activity. Retention is looking at whether they come back. And then the demographics, as I mentioned earlier, is the who are your customers and technology, what technology are they using? Website, mobile, combination of the two to get to your content. And I see, um, does Google Analytics 4 not require cross-domain tracking like Universal Analytics? Um, is it as simple as adding your code to each platform? And it is easier than you know, it's a great question, John. It is easier than the universal analytics. Um, I do want to double check on you. That's one thing that I need to double check in terms of the, um, the referral domains. But the one nice thing is it does give you the full domain path on everything out of the box. Um, unlike universal analytics, where you would need to set up a filter to see what the full domain path was. And for, you know, just to clarify, let's say I was looking at, um, www.association.org would be the CMS served content, whereas members.association.org would be the AMS served content. In Universal Analytics, if we applied the same code to both, we would need to set up filters to show us the full domain path so that we would be able to see, well, this was AMS traffic versus CMS traffic. In Google Analytics 4, we're able to see both of those out of the box. Um, so everything and and i'm seeing simple conversions downloads for more complicated conversion like tracking a purchase do you still need google tag manager it can be done in google analytics for um honestly for configuring and we'll look at some examples of this for configuring some of the conversions i think google tag manager is still an easier way to configure that even though you're doing it via google analytics for an example of that might be uh let's say a form that you want to track in google analytics for i mean you can certainly do it just by coding onto the page using global site tag but i think it's easier to implement that via google tag manager the difference between those two ways of implementing Google Analytics 4 or use Universal Analytics, Google Tag Manager is going to give you a lot more flexibility in configuring or customizing your own event parameters, data that you want to send to Google Analytics 4. Um, they got rid of the whole behavior section. They did indeed. Um, that is, um, everything is right now really around acquisition and engagement. Those are the two main focuses. So you'll notice acquisition is looking at um, acquisition overview. What are the, the default channel groupings? Something similar that you would see to Universal Analytics. I do want to point out and stress that if you are using 
universal analytics, some of these metrics might be labeled similarly, but similarly, but they are not measured in exactly the same way. And by that, I mean, don't frustrate yourself by looking at both your universal analytics and your Google analytics for expecting to see one-to-one -one comparisons in terms of numbers. They're not going to be the same. Um, sessions are a great example. You're going to see, because they're measured slightly differently in both platforms, you're going to see different numbers. So just accept that. I wouldn't stress about it. Um, one thing you'll you know keep in mind though, I would keep, you know, keep that caveat in mind if you are anticipating that you want to do year over year comparisons with 2022 numbers being in universal analytics and 2023 being in Google analytics. This would be the place you want to put your asterisk in your reporting because it's not going to be identical. Um, this is, um, so as the acquisition overview, we can also see acquisition by the users, again, just how they're coming in. Engagement is all about events now. And by that, I'll show you these. Most of these events, with the exception of generate lead, are out of the box Google Analytics for events. Page views, session start, the first visit a user comes to, user engagement. Um, I mentioned that Google Analytics 4 is focused on engagement. The definition of Google Analytics 4 engagement is on a page for two seconds, um, viewing two or more pages, or clicking a conversion event on a page. That defines an engaged session. Initially, Google said they were doing away with the whole idea of bounce rate in Google Analytics 4. Um, I think there was some pushback and panic from the user base on that. So I don't know where to get to it, but allegedly they're reintroducing it, um, it is going to be the inverse of the engagement rate. So if you have an engagement rate of 68%, your bounce rate will be considered 32%. Someone can double check me on my arithmetic there. One thing that I do want to point out, um, clicks, uh, let's just use this for, well, I'm going to start with file download. Um, file download, I can go into it will show me default every one of these, the events in the past 30 minutes. I can go down and I can see the document name. One weakness I find to the default reporting in Google Analytics 4 is just this. Any longer paths you have, they will use ellipses points um, so that it, you basically have to hover over it to see what the full name is. Um, PDF, we can see the file there. We tend to use Google Data Studio for building out reports. And that's one of the reasons we're going to look at that in a few moments, but just it makes it easier for reading. But I wanted to look at this event and then contrast it with clicks, which is what I mentioned, um, is where we can see any of those external clicks if we're, people are leaving our website to go to a member directory. This is a great, um, we build out dashboards for associations where they want to be able to report to their members how many clicks they are getting from their member directory or their buyer's guide on the website. So I can go in and see the number of clicks, where they happened. Um, that's a bizarre, you know, sample of entire, everyone at all mail. But you'll notice one thing that's missing here, where were they clicking to? And that the frustrating thing, at least for me about this, is while that data is being collected, it's not available to you in the reporting out of the box. To get that data, you need to go into the configure section of Google Analytics 4 and create a custom dimension. And to do so, you'll notice up here, try it now is that there, we can have a whole separate session on my thoughts on their UX and their labeling. But this is where you would create that custom dimension. I, you'll see that I've created a few others. File name and file extension we saw under downloads because we created those custom dimensions to display those. Um, because we did not create a custom dimension for the outbound click, we're not seeing that data. To do that, we would do basically link URL, name it. I'll be creative and call it link URL and then save. Now, 
we can go back and look at the reports, but we will not, typically it takes about 48 hours for that to start populating. So even though we've done that, we're not going to see anything anytime soon over in the events. Um, there is, they've added this pages and screen view. So this is another way that you can get at what are the pages that people are looking at on your site. Um, you can also get to that from events. This is one that is populated automatically in page view. Down here, you'll notice page titles are available. Demographics, this is where I mentioned we can see users by city, by gender, by age. To get all that, that's what I mentioned, we would wanna activate that Google Signals, which is done in the administration section of the website. So I've been talking a lot, I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in um, and I'd like to open this up you know, for a few moments to questions that people have here as well. So let's see, should universal analytics tags be removed once universal analytics is sunset? I would say yes, there's no real reason to keep that running on your site. Um, do you still need to set up event tracking to understand clicks on a PDF, for example, or will that happen automatically? Um, so that they, that's what I was, hopefully I answered there a moment ago. If not, you know, let me know. But it will track those automatically, but the, the file path, and Scott, I see answered that. The thing is, if you want to see that file path reporting, you will need to do that configuration that we showed you a few moments ago. And tell us about how this impacts our Google text ads. Um, I, Melissa, I'm not certain that I um, am certain on this, the specific of that you know, question, but if you're talking about Google advertising, let's take a look. I mean, you do have the opportunity to set up in administration any connections. So if you have Google ad links running ad manager, you can set up those properties, those accounts there, you will need um, admin or edit rights at the account level for both properties, but you can link them there. And then you will have this advertising tab, which is what I mentioned earlier, lets us see what are the channels that are driving the most conversions. And so this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier with the slides, you will be able to see the channels that drove conversions, in this case, um, on this example, direct was driving the most, but also for organic search, it's, you'll notice it has these numbers. So it's showing how many touch points were there until an individual got to that conversion on the site. So in this one, it was actually three touch points coming to the site through organic search drove more conversions than the others. Um, we can drill down into the reporting on those conversion paths. Does that, um, do we, oh, so let me see your question. Oh, no. Let's see, Melissa, do we have to hard code in the links for the Google text ad info to be tracked in G4? I don't know for certain. If anyone else does, I, I can, I can read, that's one for me to follow up on. I don't know that answer off the top of my head. Hey, Dan, I have a question. I know you had sure. mentioned that you could run, um, Google Analytics 4 in parallel with Universal Analytics. Sure. Um, you know, what are the benefits of doing that? And is that something that you actually recommend people start to do now? Or what, what would be the time frame you'd recommend for people? I'd recommend setting it up right now. And let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, again, most organizations, most associations probably have Universal Analytics in some form running on their sites. Um, and so, I'm gonna go over to a different account. Let's go, I think this one will work. Um, so this is what I will just so, you know, I'll just touch base quickly. Um, you'll notice this is what I was talking about earlier when I'm in the accounts and the properties, um, there are no views in a Google Analytics 4 account. Um, and you'll notice that the numbers are a little different. This is not your data stream number that you would implement on your site. I just want to, want to stress as well. So don't, you know, whereas this is what you would put on your site for tracking the UA4927, this is not. Um, but in the Universal Analytics site, if we go to this one, just for a second, over here in the admin, admin, link down in your lower right, lower left corner, you'll notice there is this Google Analytics for setup assistant on which you can click 
and start setting up your new analytics for a property today. And this will link it and walk you through the steps and give you instructions for implementing it. It's not always, I'll be honest, as clear as I would like it to be, but this is probably the most straightforward way to get this set up. And of course, if you say this just seems too confusing, reach out to us, we'd be happy to set it up for you as well. Does that answer your question, Lori? Yeah, yeah, that answered the question. Um, <clears throat> you know, and knowing that this, you said, is like a little bit more user-friendly in terms of setting this up maybe mm -hmm. than, um, than before, you know, what do you see as the value of working with a partner that would, you know, like Results Direct, that would be able to set this up for them? Because um, I know you do quite a bit with dashboards and things, so mm -hmm. can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. I mean, honestly, you know, the, the, what I wanted to show folks today, if you want to set this up, you know, you can get in here and, you know, do this today. But I view this a lot of times like working on your own car. You know, for those of you that are really into it, if you like getting under the hood and changing the oil, fantastic. If not, for if you're like me, it's probably more efficient just to go to someone that's doing this on a regular basis and say, here, go ahead and set this up for me. Um, I had mentioned, so let's go back and, you know, you mentioned reporting. The one downside opportunity for Google, let's call it an opportunity for Google, in, in my view, is to get better with the reporting. They do have this Explore tab, which lets you go through and create um, explorations, visualizations, um, either from a blank template or a free form or a path exploration. So these are a few. Um, this is what I was describing earlier external link URL from the reports directly, I cannot get to this, but I can come over here to this um, explore tab and configure the dimensions, configure the metrics and set up filters so that I'm able to, able to see external links off the site. So there is a way to get to that information. Um, this is, I'll just, uh, that one I haven't set up. Another way that I do like to, you know, and I'll be honest, my preferred way, probably because we were doing this heavily with Universal Analytics, um, is building out dashboards in Google Data Studio. So I'm just going to shift gears a little bit, take a look at this. Um, Google Data Studio, the advantages to this is we get you know, a lot more flexibility in the visualizations we want to do. So any of this data, I mean, here I have a... And Dan, graph, you, here I have a bar graph, a map. And Dan, and Dan, what you're showing us now, this would be an example of what you would work on with a customer that came to us to implement their Google Analytics for, is that you Correct. would be working with them on designing one of these dashboards. Okay, Correct. just want to know yes. what we were looking at. Okay. So any of this can be visualized in different ways. We can set up filters. So if we want to track um, what a given cam marketing campaign, how that drove traffic, we would be able to just look at that and see, okay, obviously this was an email campaign since that takes 100% of our sessions by channel. Um, we can use these dashboards to look at engagement, um, total users, new users, engaged sessions, um, what pages were they looking at? Again, we can filter by how they're coming to the site, the campaigns that are driving them. If we have those demographics, we can filter by those. We can take a look. The nice thing about Google Analytics, um, I'm sorry, Google Data Studio, we can pull in from multiple data sources. So in this particular one, we're looking at data from Google Analytics 4, but we're also looking for data from Google Search Console, which is the tool that lets us see what search terms are driving people to our website. Um, we can track our conversions. And I think um, someone I saw had a question there um, of some, I think Scott, you were asking about some of the conversions um, that might not be e-commerce, Form submissions, um, you're looking for someone to write, you know, they're expressing interest in membership. They want to learn about membership as an example of a, a conversion that would not necessarily have an e-commerce component. Scheduling a meeting, um, let's let's schedule a meeting to, you know, talk about a topic. Um, I had mentioned earlier, you know, basically those clicks, um, views of a member directory, of a buyer's guide that you would use for reporting back to your members. Your um, listing on our website got um, five clicks or five people clicking to write you. So those are a few examples 
uh, of conversions that we might use, that I've seen associations use. Others might be, I had mentioned downloads. They have a certain asset that they want to make certain people are reading. This is part of their big push. They want um, folks to read it. They can set that as a conversion and it makes it easier to track that. Um, I'm just going to take a look at some other questions. Um, things that Google Analytics 4 about Google Tag Manager, things that Google Analytics 4 can't do that Google Tag Manager would help with. Well, again, Tag Manager is a mechanism for implementing um, tags, which are basically marketing, you know, pieces of JavaScript on your site. So, you know, one way that I, had, you know, showed this um, Forbes submission was set up by basically setting up a tag and a trigger in this particular example, I think it was looking at some HubSpot code and saying, okay, someone submitted this HubSpot form on the website, send that over into Google Analytics so we have access to that. Um, another nice thing about Google Tag Manager is it makes it easier to deploy if you're using something like Feather or Facebook Pixels or LinkedIn remarketing. You can deploy that. It's easier to do it, in my opinion, via Tag Manager than going back to your site developers to code that into the site. Um, and so speaking of Tag Manager, I see the question, if you have an existing Google Tag Manager um, for our site with Universal Analytics, would you recommend a fresh instance to implement Google Analytics for? It's a great question. And you know, it's probably one of my that it depends questions. And by that, I mean, if it's already using, if it's configured well, and it's firing your Universal Analytics the way you want it to, it's basically, one extra tag and trigger to implement Google Analytics 4, the base configuration of Google Analytics 4 on that. So probably your easiest path is to just go ahead and implement the Google Analytics 4 tag in your existing tag manager container, especially if you want to have them running in parallel for the next nine months. If by contrast, you have a container that has 30 you know, outdated tags that aren't really being used and it's a time that you would need to clean up and you're, you know, comfortable with updating your tag manager code on the website, then you might want to just set up a fresh container. Um, set up conversion offense for a form filler, an external form or a meeting for a meeting scheduler. That's where you're probably, Scott, um, it's probably going to be, you know, using a little bit of you know, we're, we're getting a little technical there. That's going to be writing some JavaScript to, to listen for that particular event and capture that and send that from Tag Manager over into Google Analytics 4. Stephanie is asking, how do you um, track views for individual pages in Google Analytics 4? Um, again, out of the box, you will have that right here in engagement pages and screens. And you will default by see the, the most pages through there. One thing that is missing, and let's see if I can get to it. Um, Google Analytics 4 does not have a landing page view the way you might be used to in Universal Analytics. So there's a couple ways you can get around that. You can Either go over here into this view and set your event count to session start and sort to see what page they started on in the site. You can also go over to this explorer and set up a view with the dimension landing page, which exists. It's just not there available for you um, without you going in to configure a report in the back end. Um, let's see, can you track user ID in Google Analytics 4 out of the box? Um, now by user ID, Young, are you referring to, I mean, the, Google is assigning a user ID. Are you talking about um, a user ID from an AMS? If that's the case, that would not be out of the box. You would still need to do some configuration for that. And following um, Google's guidelines of making certain that there's no personally identifiable information going into Google Analytics, especially with those privacy laws we talked about, Google's very conscious that there's no way that users can track that back. 
Um, will tag managers still protect our members' private data or does Google capture and expose this information? Um, again, I'm, you know, not a lawyer, but I can tell you that the whole one of the whole purposes of Google developing, you know, and I know your question is about Tag Manager. Tag Manager is not really collecting, to my knowledge, much in terms of the user information. It's used for implementing tags on your website. And the tag we're talking about today is the Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 4 is designed to, you know, give the users that ability to say, look, I want to opt my data out of um, this collection. So the, the users have, now if you're going, if you know, the next logical question was, well, how do users do that with Google? I'll be honest, I don't know. I haven't gone in to look up how they would do that yet. But one of the main points of Google Analytics 4 is putting a lot more of that control in the user's hands. Figure out how to search for specific pages in Google Analytics 4, any advice? Um, so I, I'm guessing that's just where you would sort of the, Jesse, um, Jessica, I'm sorry, Jessica, um, that would be similar to what you were looking for in Universal Analytics, where you just had that ability to, you should be able to from this view, and let's, let's try, because I'll be honest, I haven't, yes, so, you know, right here, you should have that ability to search by, in this case, we're looking at page title, if we wanted to search by page path, um, You should be able to do that right at the top here. I hope that answers your question. Um, and then the best solution to track registered users. Uh, by registered, do you mean if we we're talking about um, individuals that are logged in, you could set up um, an event to track when someone authenticates in the AMS. And that would be something that's you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't have a system set up here that I could just try to demonstrate that on the fly, but that would be something where we could probably use Tag Manager to create um, a custom event that tracks when someone's logged in. And actually, since I'm, you know, we're talking about that, Google does have a set of what they call predefined preferred um, event names, you can name an event pretty much anything you want, but Google has about 30 or 50 that they've recommended that we use. And I believe login is one of them off the top of my head, but it does require some configuration. Other questions? Again, if you want to come off mic and just, you know, ask so it's not just me talking, I'd, I'd be thrilled with that. Um, Results Direct does support Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4 setup. We do indeed. That is um, our regular way of setting up analytics for our clients in addition to using that Google Data Studio for building out reporting dashboards. One other thing about that Data Studio I mentioned, the thing that I like about it a lot is you can then, once we have those dashboards, those can be made shareable via a link. Why does that matter? A lot of times if you're reporting to your executive team and you just want to show them how many people have registered for the event, how many people have taken action on your advocacy pages, um, you can give them that access to that report off your internet. They can get that data in real time without having you to generate without you having to generate monthly reports or out without them having to have a login to Google Analytics to get that data. Um, I mean, if you're the analytics person and you're in their day to day, this explore option lets you do some really neat things. If on the other hand, you just need monthly or quarterly reporting, I recommend the, the dashboard because you can pull in aggregate data, just relevant data and highlight it for your end users off of the data studio. Is there a way to overcome third parties that don't support Google Tag Manager, um, LMS or event vendor, for example? That's a great question. And um, I'll tell you a couple, I'll just share a couple of scenarios that we've worked with, with uh, associations with which they've worked and their, their partners. Um, you know, there are some, I'm not gonna name names, but you know, some um, event management companies that are, very conservative with allowing the placement of a, another tag manager on their site. And they may have maybe have their own tag manager. Um, our partner associations, and we have managed to sometimes come to an agreement where we've created a duplicate container that they own 
we have the ability to edit and update the tags, but the publish rights reside with the event management company. So basically, you know, what we've done in those scenarios, and this is, it's double duty, but we're replicating the tags we've created on the association's Google Tag Manager container, copied them over to the second container that is being that the event management companies agreed to host. And then they have the ability for their team to review the tags, say, yes, those look good. And then they have to publish them. So it's a little extra work, but it is one way that we found we were able to successfully get the tags we wanted implemented on a third party site. Um, let's see. So the, the question is, is there an option through RD Mobile um, for our, you know, it's a great question um, on the app side that we can connect the analytics account. Um, we are working on that. That is, um, we, 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 we do not have that ability at this point, but that is something that I've been talking with our CTO about and have, you know, he is eager to explore that as well. We are looking to make this um, Google Analytics 4 um, integration available in future releases of the app. So it is not at present, but the plan is for that. The irony is we used to use Universal Analytics um, or Google Analytics with the app. Um, Google stopped supporting on their old um, you know, app um, analytics. So we had to move to another platform. Now that Google Analytics 4 is, is back supporting on the app, we are interested in moving back to Google Analytics 4 for that. How does Google for deliver differ in its ability to deliver metrics and reports over programs like Personify or other association management software? Um, is the question, Melissa, you know, can they, can we track, um, is that if we're deploying Google Analytics 4 to our Personify? So if we're going from the, the CMS to the AMS, is that the question? Um, if so, um, if your AMS supports, um, yeah, implementing the analytics code or the tag manager code, we should be able to, I mean, in Google Analytics 4, let me see if I have any demo accounts that would show that. I'm going to just take a quick look at the Google. This is Google's demo account as opposed to one of our accounts, because I don't think I have any configured doing that. Um, page title, huh? page path. Uh, this doesn't have the full URL, so I, I have to dig a little bit. I, but we should be able to, um, yeah, or you said that's one application. Were there other things that you were thinking of? And again, we're at a point that folks, if you want to come off of mic, I'm fine with that as well. You're all here. You've got- Okay, I'm all. <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> okay. Um, for us, for example, we use Personify as our um, data management base for our membership. And looking at that, of course, we can run reports and um, find out how many people registered for an event, find out um, just various information about our members. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at something like G4, it's what are the advantages in using G4, okay. what are the differences over what just a general um, membership management database like program could do? Looking at event registrations. Okay. No, I think that's, if I understand the question is why would you look at Google Analytics 4 as opposed to just seeing your event registrations, your renewals or whatnot through um, Google Analytics 4, correct? Um, the one advantage, and I, I, I will say that the, um, the, you know, obviously your AMS for those things is going to be your database of record. I mean, that's the authoritative one where the money's coming in. Where the, the value is of sending this data to um, Google Analytics 4, or before that even Universal Analytics, is at tracking that user journey to get them to register for the event, to renew. So that's when I was looking, when we were looking earlier at the advertising, um, Obviously, I would suggest renewals would be, for most associations, a conversion point that you'd want to track. Um, event registrations would be a conversion point. So being able to track those paths are our email campaigns driving people to take that action. And again, this is now we're looking at them at the aggregate, but we could certainly do reportings by specific conversions. Um, 
So seeing where, and then from there, seeing where might they be dropping off in the funnel? Where might we lose them? You know, so they've see, opened the email where we asked them to register for the event. They read the event, but they did not click on the register button or they clicked on the register button, but didn't fill out the form. You know, was it because we put too many fields there in front of them? Um, I, I will be candid, you know, some conversions are easier to configure than others. If you're looking to do full e-commerce, um, that's often pulling data from, you know, we're going to need to, you know, work with your partners because most often that transactional data, the products live in the AMS or they may live in the event management system or the LMS. Um, it's, uh, it's not easy. And the, the bad news is, if um, you already have that implemented with Universal Analytics, you're going to have to do it over for Google Analytics 4. There is no, that is when Google shows their conversion paths from use, you know, Universal Analytics, Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4. That is the e-commerce is the one that they've listed as, I think the only one, if I recall correctly, they listed as hard or challenging. So, I mean, by their own, admit, you know, unfortunately, there's no easy migration from those old um, not being too technical, but a lot of that was being passed through the data layer. There's no easy, you know, just, oh, let's take the universal analytics tags and flip those over to GA4 for e-commerce. Other things might be easier. Does that help, Melissa? Um, we so have... Know. Yes, thank you. Okay, sure. I know we're coming up on time here. So, um, Dan, did you have any other direct questions that came into you or anything, um, kind of final thoughts that you had wanted to share? I am trying to scroll through. Hopefully I did. If I, if someone asked something in the chat that I missed or that, you know, Lori, you know, shout it out now, you got eight and a half minutes or something that wasn't asked already. Yeah, I think we got, we hit on, um, most all of the, of the, the questions here. So there was really some great engagement today. Um, <clears throat> and we are coming up on time. Um, so I do want to thank everybody um, for joining us today. And, and to kind of close us out, um, just share with you um, a little bit of closing information about Results Direct. <clears throat> So as I had mentioned in the beginning, you know, Results Direct has helped hundreds of associations to achieve real results from their websites. Um, to give you an example of um, what I mean when I say that, um, one client that we've worked with, the USA Rice organization, they were able to increase their website traffic 50% and to increase um, the traffic that they got to their website from search engines by over 40%. Um, so if you're interested in achieving results like that, um, um, or interested in leveraging Google Analytics and, and um, GA4, like we've talked today, to be able to measure your website performance. And as Dan had mentioned, you know, share some of those reports with executives. We can help you. Um, so, Dan, if you want to actually pull up the um, contact information screen, that would be really helpful. I do that right now. <clears throat> and I, I am seeing, you know, there was a question, I think, from John. What custom reports do you find the most useful? Um, I would say to that, it's it's the one that's most relevant to you. And that's what I was trying to, you know, when we were looking at some of those, what are the goals? You know, a website really exists, an association website exists to support the organization's goals. So what are you trying to accomplish? If it is getting people to register for your annual meeting and having that report that shows, you know, these are the um, advertising campaigns that are driving registrations, what's most effective for getting folks to register for the annual meeting. Uh, I'll offer one example from one of our clients. Again, they were looking to drive um, people to apply for career, doing a careers um, effort with their members where they wanted to drive traffic to their members' websites to look for jobs. So the, the dashboard we set up was, okay, who's, you know, let's look at the search of that members list and who's getting the most traffic. So it really, I, 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 advocate you know it's it's interesting to look at how many people come to the site it's interesting to see what content they're viewing but i think identifying those business goals and building out reports that meet your organization's needs are what i recommend all right thank um, you and reporting to advertisers each month again if you have if you're doing ads um we could set up reports you know it might be a little work but you know that you could definitely set up in 
Google Analytics for reports on how many people are clicking on a given ad. I'm just seeing a few other questions, um, information captured. User clicks on our site begins to fill out a form and the registration process would be able to see the contact information in G. You will not be able to see their contact information in Google Analytics for Google Analytics is not going to track that individual information in there. And there, while there might be ways to make that happen, that's a good way to get Google to shut down your analytics account if they find out that is happening. So. And I do want to be aware of our time um, today, and um, I know that there's probably lots of questions that people, you know, may still continue to have, um, and we're here to help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, so a great next step for you would be to set up a free consultation with our team. <clears throat> So you can do that by emailing. Um, we have our email address on the screen there, solutions at resultsdirect.com. Also, you can scan that QR code right there. That'll bring you to our website um, or the contact us form, which if you submit that form, um, one of our um, team of experts will be in touch with you um, to set up that meeting. Um, as we mentioned in the beginning, we'll also be sending a follow-up email with the recording and information. Um, and so thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for the engaging conversation. Thank you, Dan, for all of the wonderful knowledge that you shared, um, shared with us today. And as I mentioned, the results recharge is a regular series that we do. We hope to see you on uh, the next results recharge webinar soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all. Have a great day.